it's Daria here. Welcome to Scrum Mastered. Let's do some sprint planning. In my last video, you learned how to create a product backlog from scratch. We finished with a clear product goal, an epic, and quite a few product backlog items, including functional and non-functional requirements. It's time to start our first sprint. I'll be using the same software from my friends at ZenHub and the same product backlog we created earlier. But before I jump into the video, remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel and join my newsletter at scrummaster.com. I constantly share practical insights on how to build awesome teams so that you can do it too. And if you're looking for guides and templates to help you with facilitation and give you clear plans of action on various topics, check out my online store at shop.scrummaster.com. If you were looking for a more specific template and agenda items for this spring planning meeting, you can find it in the Scrum Master Startup Guide. And now back to the video. And we're back to our product backlog where we are building an educational hub about Scrum. If you haven't watched my video on how to create a product backlog from scratch, I encourage you to go and watch it first before coming back and looking at how we're going to create our first sprint backlog and start our sprint. To help us with our sprint planning, we define the sprint goal. The goal that the product owner has decided to put in is the build online awareness around our brand and the upcoming website. Since we know that we will not be able to create the whole hub in just one sprint, we need to have some chunk of that already there and the product owner has a good idea of where we need to put our efforts. First, let's create some awareness. Unfortunately, you cannot add the sprint goal into ZenHub, but this is something that you can put in separately just to keep track of all of the things that you're working on. With that, the team can now start selecting items that will be required to complete this sprint goal. So even though I have created the hosting and specific domain name for our product, I don't really know what exactly it would entail. So when I would talk to the developers, they asked me what exactly I would need in the hosting. Do I have any specific requirements? I am not technical and I don't want to impose any solutions on the developers, but I do have a couple of requirements. Here are some of the criteria that I want to put for this specific enabler. As you can see, I have added the domain name has to include the name of the brand and hosting must have very low downtime and high speed. Those are very important value metrics for me as a product owner because I know and understand what our customers would want, as well as the business side of things where we want to create awareness around our brand name. Having these requirements in mind, the developers can now discuss what actually needs to be done for this item to be completed. So they add some to-do tasks. They have added a few to-do tasks right here just to give them an idea of what are some of the different things they need to think about and consider when they work on this item. They don't need to have all of the details right here, but they have already an overview and overall high level understanding of the work that is included in here. So it means that they can now start estimating the work before putting it into the sprint. Estimating work is not mandatory in Scrum, but it is a great practice that can help you plan ahead with more consistency. The great thing about ZenHub is that they do have a planning poker already integrated in their software. Let's say that I have decided to estimate it as an 8, so I choose 8. This is my estimate that I have added, and then once everybody adds their estimates, we will be able to see who voted what, and we will be able to discuss it in more detail, potentially adding more to-do tasks in here, or maybe redefining some of the criteria. The team believes that they will be able to complete this item within our sprint, so they put it into our sprint backlog. Right here, we already start creating our sprint backlog to help us plan ahead. Of course, just setting up the hosting doesn't actually bring any value to the product owners, stakeholders, or the customers, so we need to add some more items into our sprint backlog, and this is also required for us to be able to achieve our sprint goal. 
here are a few things that the team has decided to bring in install the website builder software and in the same way as before the product owner has decided to add a few acceptance criteria right here it has to be user friendly for non-technical people because we're thinking up ahead about people who will be adding content to the website now the team would love to create the very first page that will have all of the scrum framework explanation there however they realize that they might not have time for that so instead they believe they should create an under construction page first we don't have this item in our product backlog so because we have uncovered it during the sprint planning we can create it and add it into our epic and into our sprint I have added this here, right here under the construction page, and I can put it in here into our sprint backlog. So our sprint backlog is getting pretty full, and the question comes back to our sprint goal. Will we be able to achieve our sprint goal with this sprint backlog? The product owner believes that if we do have time, it is important to create some brand awareness. We need to have some of those brand guidelines already defined and include some of that branding onto our page, even though it just is under construction page. In the same way as with the content, we know that we will not be able to create the whole brand guidelines right away, but what we can do is to have a logo. And this will be one item that we're going to take out from the brand guidelines item and add into our sprint backlog. In the same way, I have added it into the new issues. I can now add it into the correct epic and add it into our product backlog. And of course, because this is something we want to do this sprint, it will go right here. Looking at this, the team believes that they have enough work to start the sprint and we can start the sprint. The software helps you organize your work in product backlog and other issues that you can use. So there are epics and icebox and you can have the separate field or column for new issues and you can really customize all of these items and make them your own. So you can create the workflow that works for you. Even though I am talking about Zenhub here as it is a new software that I'm just discovering and I believe it looks really great, it's easy and user friendly, there are other software that technically do exactly the same thing as Zenhub, such as Jira, Azure DevOps, or even Trello. Of course, all, all of them have their pros and cons, and it is up to you and your organization and your team to decide what software will work for you. Zenhub is a great choice if your team already works with GitHub because it is integrated and you can follow through between the two platforms very easily and really see all of the issues in one place in a more visual way. So as you can see, we have started from scratch. We had absolutely nothing in our product backlog. And now not only do we have our product backlog for our first product goal already started, we also have some ideas on our wish list that we have put for maybe further discussion down the line. And we are ready to start our sprint. So if your team is looking into how they can create their product backlog, I hope this helps you see how you can go about it. And yes, I do have a guide that actually goes over a facilitation of a workshop that can help your team create a good product backlog. It doesn't use any specific tools, but it is a first step for your team to start using those tools to start populating your product backlog. So I definitely encourage you to check check it out. Of course, there is much more we can do. And there is definitely much more I can share with you about how to manage the backlog and how the team can start with various tools for it. But we only have so much time. So at this point, I'll say that's it for this video. Leave a like and subscribe for more practical insights like this one. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers and scram on.